So God sends Jeremiah to hear the word of the Lord. But he doesn't send him to hear a preacher in a pulpit. He doesn't send him to the temple to hear an exposition of the Torah. But he sends him to a potter's wheel. And it's there, as the potter is, is doing his art, uh, doing his craft, that the word of the Lord comes to Jeremiah. How would it transform our lives if we understood that God was speaking to us all the time? Not just through preachers and pulpits and Bible studies and gatherings in a, a church building, but through people that we encounter. Uh, through art, through film, through movies, through just the normal everyday occurrences that happen in our life. Some of the most powerful times that God has ever spoken to me yeah. were uh, out in nature. Uh, like when the waves came and washed away the scribble of my children playing in the sand. Or a butterfly bursting forth from a cocoon. Or a resilient uh, flower holding strong in a rainstorm. God spoke to me through those moments. Has God ever spoken to you in that so I want to invite you to the potter's wheel this morning to watch uh, someone doing their art, doing their craft. And I want to see if you hear a word from the Lord so we can interpret that together. So let's watch this little video of uh, Keala finding her voice and the transformation that kind of occurs. Let's watch it together. There's going to be a quiz afterwards, so pay attention. <laughs> Thank you, Justin, just reading this new song I'm called This Is Me. And uh, we knew that it was going to be the anthem of the film, um, but no one had heard it before, and no one had heard Kiara sing it live. And Kiara, who I didn't even want to come out from behind the music stand. I didn't. I, I kept saying, you know, just step out, because this is your moment, and you have to step out into the ring, metaphorically, because that's what you're doing. You're going to stand right there in front of everyone, and just felt this out. I just stood behind that music stand yeah. until the day of that presentation. There was a moment in the song that I actually was so scared that I had to actually grab Hugh's hands so that I had something to hold on to. And then we got to the end of the number. And all I remember is just deafening, deafening applause. It was a sort of a worldly experience. It was one of those moments that will save me the rest of my life. Unfortunately, we filmed it.
So did you see it? Woo! So tell me, what did you hear? What did you experience? What did you notice? Did God speak anything to you through that? Oh my gosh, the Holy Spirit showed up. The Holy Spirit showed up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, she walked out from the stand. Yeah, she, she was like, up. I hear God calling me. I'm going to just take a step of faith. I'm sorry. And then the energy of everybody else and all that love and support like, lifted her. It was awesome. And yes. freed her. Yes. 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 And freed her. Yes. And we are all enough. Yes. And that's it. Acceptance. Yes. Okay. Yes. Amen. God's love is contagious. God's love is contagious. God's love is contagious. We are enough. We are enough. So remember a couple weeks ago, we are enough. Yes. We are more than what we've become. We are loved. So yeah, all those things are kind of happening there, right? There's like, she's afraid to even step out behind the music saying at first. And, uh, and you see her as she's singing the songs and the words about, about hiding my scars and being somebody who's been put in the dark. That she's actually like becoming what she's singing as she sings it. Yeah. And you see like the Holy Spirit just moving and operating. And there's like this energy mosaic, yes. if you will. Where she's drawing off the, the love and energy of the other people and it just becomes this explosion of, of art and creativity, right? What an awesome analogy for the church of Jesus Christ. See, we, we all have to take our place from behind the music stand and take our place on the stage of the world and be salt and light. But we can't do it alone. We need each other. Yes. Amen. And there's going to be times where we're going to have to take each other's hands. There's going to be times where we're going to have to draw strength for each other because our This Is Me song cannot be sung in isolation. Amen. But in this community that we call the body, the church of Jesus Christ. And I came to tell you this morning about the living mosaic. And as I pray over the Word of God, I'm going to ask Pastor Lorraine to come forward and begin to actually create a mosaic. Uh, so while I'm preaching, and she's going to be... Chris is going to be my assistant. And, and assistant, Pastor Chris. So let's pray over the Word of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Word. It's a light unto our path. It's a mirror that shows us who we are. It's a revelation of God that shows us who you are. And so we pray that this will not be simply time of just another church service. But we come humbly seeking an encounter with you. We ask that you would cause these words to burst forth from their ink cage and live and dance in us in incarnate ways. We ask the Holy Spirit that you would breathe upon your scriptures and bring them to life in our midst. And that you would give us the strength to not simply be hearers of the word only, but doers also. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. So down at the potter's house that day, the potter's just doing his thing, working at the wheel, and Jeremiah goes there and, and to hear a word of the Lord. And as the potter's working at the clay, it, it becomes marred and broken and fragmented in the potter's hands. And so the potter doesn't scrap the project and start over. The potter doesn't give up or go get another new loaf of clay, right? The potter just takes what's become different and he begins to, to shape and, and to reform it. And the word of the Lord comes to Jeremiah through the, the potter's wheel, through that heart. Now a little bit of context about Jeremiah. Uh, he's a prophet. And sometimes prophets have a tough job. Can I get an amen? amen. Sometimes prophets are sent to comfort the afflicted. And sometimes prophets are sent to afflict the comfortable. Can I get an amen? And Jeremiah, he does a little bit of both. And so prophets offer us the gift of this high highfalutin seminary term called interpretive leadership. So prophets lead a community through a story. They lead them through an interpretation, a narrative, a reality. And oftentimes prophets are called to present a counter narrative, a different story than the dominating story of the people of that day. So in Jeremiah's day, the story is, hey, everything's great. This is an age of prosperity. Look, all the numbers are up and to the right. The economy's great. Employment's great. And Jeremiah's saying, no, not true. 
In fact, this is a time of unequal corruption. Uh, from the toughest, highest levels of leadership all the way down. He says the religious system is bankrupt. The political system is bankrupt. And so Jeremiah is not a real popular guy. He gets whipped and stripped and he gets thrown in the well a couple times. And he uses the art of his preaching, of his prophecy. And he uses uh, belts and different kind of props as a, a medium of proclamation to God's people to present this counter narrative. Then he becomes even more popular. When what he says actually proves to be right, and uh, the people get exiled, and they're living out in the, in the, uh, the wilderness, and the prophets are saying, don't worry, it's going to be okay, we're going to go back soon, just hold on, everything's going to be fine. And Jeremiah is saying, no, it's not going to be fine, no, we're not going back anytime soon. In fact, you need to plant gardens and bless the people where you are, take a posture of permanence, because we're going to be here for a while, and in fact, even intermarry and interbreed with your captors. Not a real popular stance yeah. for Jeremiah to take, but results in these folks that we see in the New Testament that Jesus encounters that are called the Samaritans. Uh, so Jeremiah, he's not real uh, loved in his day and time, but even in the middle of, of all the crisis and all the brokenness and all the fragmentation of God's people, the Lord gives us a word at the potter's will. That when you have become marred, I will reshape and reform you. That even though Israel had turned away and strayed from God, God is saying, even now, if you would turn yourself back to my love, I would reshape and reform you and make you a new creation. Yes. Our God doesn't give up on us. He's the God who makes all things new. But he doesn't scrap the project and start over. But he takes who and what we are and he shapes and he, and he reforms us. And one of the great uh, problems that I have uh, in our culture today is that we really don't take our own brokenness seriously. Uh, the, the this is me song of this world and this culture is this is me with all my sins. Right? You only live once. YOLO. Do whatever you want. Do whatever feels good. That's kind of the, the, the common narrative, the story, the wisdom of the day. Amen? Amen. That's not God's story, unfortunately. Our This Is Me song is a little bit different. Because Jeremiah says, just in the chapter previous to this potter's wheel situation, he says, it's the hearts of human beings that are evil and broken above all things. It's the hearts of humanity that's wicked, even above the devil. So all this devil made me do it stuff. Y'all ever pull that part? Uh, no, actually, you can be bad all by yourself. If you make it. And most of the brokenness and fragmentation of humanity is not the devil's fault. It's us. And Jeremiah says, you got this fragmentation, this, this brokenness. See, the good news of God's story in this. Starts very good. Starts your enough. Starts that you were made in my image, stewards of creation, your reflections of my own personhood and glory in the world. But something goes wrong with the project, right? The same called sin. There's fragmentation. There's brokenness, and all of it, ha all of us have it. But God says, even though that has happened, I'm not going to just leave you. I'm not going to give up on you. I'm going to reshape and remold, and you'll be like clay in the hands of the potter. I'll make you into a new creation. Can I get an amen this morning? This is exciting stuff and you're not really getting excited with me. <laughs> so, I think in order to get to this place that Jesus talks about where we love ourselves and that we have that healthy self-love and we can love our neighbor in the way that we love ourselves, we have to own who we are. Amen. The good and the bad and the ugly. All of us need to do a little inventory of ourselves, right? Amen. Yes. And all of us have liabilities and all of us have assets. Every human being casts a shadow. Yes. Can I get an amen on that? Yes. Every one of us. And typically, the greater your light is, the, the more gifts that God gives you, the, the more capacity, the bigger your shadow can be. And oftentimes we go through the world and we don't even, we're not even conscious of our shadow. Like I'm not walking around looking at what my shadow is doing, are you? 
But all through Scripture, we see God using broken, messed up people. Amen. Right? Like Moses, who, by the way, killed a guy and hid his body in the sand, but God used him to lead his people out of liberation. Yes. Or people like Mary Magdalene, who Luke tells us had seven demons in her that got cast out. She became one of Jesus' key disciples, one of the greatest leaders of the movement. Or people like Saul of Tarsus, who was kind of the dog of the bounty hunter in the ancient world. It was like a terrorist. It was hunting down Christians and killing them. But God uses them as the apostle to the Gentiles. Or like David, who God calls a man after my own heart, who gave all the desires that anything a human being could ever want. But David had a little problem with the ladies. Yeah. Can I get an amen? amen? And adultery and murder. Or like Solomon, who asks God for wisdom, and God blesses him with that wisdom, but because of his ego, it drives him mad, and he goes crazy in his wisdom. See, all of us have a dark side. Yours might manifest in different ways, uh, in obsessive-compulsive ways, in uh, people-pleasing ways, in uh, codependent kind of ways, in all the isms. Right? Yes. The way that our dark side can yes. show up. Racism yes. and sexism and patriotism. Those things mm -hmm. are manifestations of our dark side. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we see like Christian leaders falling all the time and, and uh, ones that we look up to and respect to have profound leadership ability, then the next thing you know, they've had this moral failure, this fall. It's because they get to this place where they're so powerful and they have nobody in their life that's holding them accountable and is pointing out their dark sides to them, right? That's right, man. So this is why Jesus says he builds his church on this discipleship model. And a disciple is literally just a learner. That's what the, the word means, we're a learner. So who are you learning from? Who's discipling you? Right? We never grow beyond the place where we need somebody discipling us, no matter how old you get. Amen. We all need a Master Yoda in our life. Yes. Amen. Somebody who's discipling us, who's walking us through the process, and we all need to be discipling someone else. Um, and part of that relationship is letting somebody into that soul space, into our shadow, into our dark side, and dumping out all our stuff. We're only as sick as our secrets. Amen. 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 And saying, this is who I am. This is me, the good, the bad, the you ugly. Know. So when they see that dark side, that shadow manifesting, they can call us on it, right? Like, I see this coming out of you, and it's, it's not of God, and you're missing the mark here. And, and I see this brokenness coming out in your relationships and, and what you're doing in your life. We all need people in our life that can speak into that place, right, that we trust. And we really need communities of people. That we let into that but the good news of our story is that God says, even though you become large in my hands, even with the, the shadow and the brokenness, I'm going to shape and remake you into a new creation. See, this is what Paul is talking about when he gets to 2 Corinthians. If anyone is in Christ, you are new creation. Amen. Shazam. Right now, in this life, in this moment, kind of, new creation. Now, not one day when I die, by and by, high in the sky. Right now, you are a new creation. Say that with me. I am a new creation. I am a new creation in Christ. Right now. I am a new creation in Christ. Paul says, if anyone is in Christ, they are new creation. And the way that God makes things new is not in our way of like brain spanking new. Right? That's our narrative. That's our story. We like new stuff. We like new cars and new relationships and new clothes and new homes and new shoes. We also create waste in our pursuit of newness. I know you don't want to say amen to that. Yeah. Uh, but that's not the way that God makes things new. God doesn't waste anything. Amen. God doesn't throw anyone or anything away. Amen. But God's way of making things new is potters at wheels. It's streams and deserts. It's fragments and lives put back together into a new creation. Yes. It's bodies that were dead. 
raised up from death, empty tombs. This is the way that God makes things new. Can I give you a God takes all of us, the good and the bad and the ugly, and brings us together into this beautiful new creation mosaic. He takes all the fragmented pieces of our lives and puts them back together in a new way. And that is our This Is Me song. Yes. That who we are in Christ makes us new creation. Now, interestingly enough, Paul says, if anyone's in Christ Jesus, they're new creation. Perekamon is the Greek word there. Kainos, new creation. Perekamon. The old is gone and passed away. Literally, the word means faded from view. As the old you faded from view. Yeah. <laughs> so the new creation can come forth. And it's the same word that John the Revelator uses about the whole creation, that God's way of making new things is not just for us individually or as church, but the whole cosmos is being stripped of sin and brokenness and made new. And he says that, Behold, I saw the city coming down from heaven in a new creation, and God has made his dwelling with his people, and Perekomai, the old creation, had passed away. God is making us new in that same kind of way. New creations, the old fading from view. And then he says, and God has reconciled us to himself through Jesus. Amen. 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 So our story is not, hey, I was doing great, and God just came along and made me a little bit better. <laughs> our story is not, hey, I just needed a little bit of self-help therapy or some, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, some, some of that sugar water preaching, some of that like uh, prosperity gospel, you know, God wants you to be healthy, wealthy, and wise, and if you just give the church your money, you'll have that, right? Or that, that kind of things that we hear in churches, that everything's good, you know, you don't have to be transformed in the image of God, just keep going the way that you're going, YOLO, you only live once, right? But God's way is coming down into our sin-broken life when our world is a mess, when we're marred in the potter's hands, and in the person of Jesus, purchases and shapes and transforms our lives and makes us into a new creation. And then puts in this new vessel His own self, His own presence, His own spirit, His own power, the life of heaven that lives in you and me and flows through our veins. And then he says, and I've given you the gift of reconciliation. So it doesn't stop there, right? It's not just that Jesus has reconciled us to God, but you as the church, I've given you the ministry, the gift of reconciliation. So we, as the body of Christ in the world, as this mosaic of fragmented pieces come together and we become God's instrument of reconciliation in the world. So God wants to use you Yes, even with your fragmented, broken self, as an instrument of reconciliation in the lives of others. And God does that through the church. Um, the Lord takes the little broken fragments of our lives and puts them back together. This is why you should not be ashamed of your scars. In fact, you should put your broken places up on the stage for all the world to see. Because it's the scars, it's the broken places that point most fully to God. Amen. Yes. To the God who can take our scars <laughs> and our broken places and use them to His glory. Amen. It's those moments of our greatest failures that God uses to lead others into loving relationship with Himself and to reconcile people to himself. We just have to have the courage to step from behind the mic stand and be a light in the world and sing our This Is Me song, but we don't do it alone, right? It takes a community. This is why uh, through our baptisms today with Tiana, uh, we're not like just baptizing her and hanging her out to dry, right? <laughs> <laughs> but she's coming into a community. Yes. Yes. And we are making a commitment together that we're going to walk beside her and her son through the good and the bad and the ugly of her life. Yes. We're going to make that commitment. She's going to make a commitment, but we're also going to make a commitment. Amen. 
And we're being brought together, the little pieces of us, into this wonderful new mosaic. This new creation, this body of Christ uh, in the world. And in the times when we're afraid, in the times when we're hurting, in the times when we don't think we can make it through, we can take each other's hands. We can draw upon each other's love and energy so that we can be this masterpiece of new creation in the world. Do you know that you're a masterpiece? Do you believe that for yourself? Yes. Do you believe that God has taken the fragments of your life and by His grace and power created this marvelous new creation? Yes. Do you believe that God has called you to be salt and light in the world? that will draw people into himself. I'm going to ask Pastor Lorraine to come forward and, and close us and share what she made up here. And then Pastor Nicole is going to lead us in that song. And I pray that we're going to sing it until we actually believe it. In the Pastor Lorraine. Luckily, I didn't make a mess, which is a good thing. Um, we'll be the
uh, communion. I almost forgot communion. Uh, so this is an opportunity for you to respond to God's love today. This is an opportunity to become part of the mosaic of His grace. Um, to bring your pride to self with all your hurts and your habits and your hang-ups. And uh, receive a fresh infusion of God's grace. And so on that final night when Jesus was betrayed, he took a common loaf of bread, he lifted it up to all his disciples, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you, take me. Then he lifted up the cup among them and said, this is the blood of the new covenant shed for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink, all of you, and do this always in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice as we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Come to the table of the Lord, come to the feast of forgiveness. 